I'm your host, Liam Kelly. With us today is a local legend of sorts, singer, songwriter, musician, and I guess we can add actor to his resume, Frank LaFaro. How you doing, Frankie? I'm doing good, Bill, but I thought your name was Bill. What's with the no, Liam? No, no, it's, it's Liam. Bill was my slave name. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's actually uh, Gaelic, and that's the last half of William. So that's correct. That's my that's name. That's right. Is, okay? Well, it's good to be here with you, Bill. Right, yeah. Liam. <laughs> We're here at uh, beautiful Penn's Landing in Philadelphia for the annual Duop Festival of which you've been a participant for the last several years. And um, tell us about the festival, you know, and its cause. Well, this is actually the, uh, the fourth of, of four festivals uh, for the uh, Veterans Multi-Service Center. And I've been, uh, I've been honored by uh, being invited for four years consecutively. I've performed here the last three years and I've been invited and I've been on the bill for this year also. And uh, what the multi-service center is about, Bill, is uh, it's, it's basically for the veterans and it's uh, set up for the homeless, uh, the infirm, uh, and any, any, of, the, any of the veterans' uh, needs that needs, they have. Yeah. That's a great cause. Uh, let's start by getting a little background on you. You know, where did you grow up and, and uh, go to school? Oh, well, I grew up in Philadelphia. I grew up in West Philadelphia, a little Italian neighborhood known as uh, 49th Street, 49th and Lancaster Avenue in West Philadelphia. And I went to school. Uh, uh, our grade school was Our Lady of Angels, and I went to St. Thomas More Catholic Boys High School. Yeah. When did you start singing? Did you sing in, start singing in school? Most people that I know, their careers started, you know, as uh, young people singing in the hallways and in the bathrooms and everything. How about you? Well, I got to that, but I basically <laughs> started singing uh, out, of the, out of the womb, just about. Uh, actually, my parents used to know that I was awake because they put the crib near the piano, which I took lessons from the nuns for seven years. Sister Grace Immaculate used to lift me up off the ground by my sideburns. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, the singing came uh, at the same time. Um, so basically, yeah, I did eventually get to the hallways and, yeah. and echo chambers of the <laughs> high school. So did you come from a musical family? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, all my, my mother's family, they, they were all singers. And my father had a beautiful voice, and he played guitar. Who, who or what was your inspiration for uh, becoming a singer and performer? Well, uh, when I was uh, 18 months, two years old, I had a, a little record player, and I had all the 78s that were out at the time. It was like Nat King Cole, Rosemary Clooney, uh, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, and uh, I would have to say that of all of them, uh, Frank Sinatra, if I had to pick one, was my, uh, my greatest influence. Really? Yeah, I've seen you do Frank Sinatra and Bobby Darin, and you do an excellent job uh, with both of them, by the way. Who else influenced your music? I've well, you know, it's it's hard to say. I, it, during the uh, during the doo-wop era, uh, I would have to say it would be the Skyliners, uh, Johnny Maestro, and the Crest, the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Dion of the Belmonts, a little Anthony Imperials, groups yeah. like that. But but after that, the classic rock era, I would say it was Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, the Beatles, that type of thing. Right, the Eagles. Really. You know. Well, that's a pretty diverse group of uh, you know collection of styles of music. Uh, but a great deal of your music and success was done with the doo-wop and acapella. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, that was the door that was open to me out of all the different uh, facets of music that I'm involved yeah. in and I, I do and write in. That was the one. Yeah. Yeah. You sung with some pretty well-known people, too, like Len Barry of the Dovells and uh, Billy Carlucci, Billy and the Essentials. Uh, what other groups and performers have you sung with? Well, we opened for just about everybody. We opened for, uh, with my group Frankie and the Fashions, we opened uh, for... Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, again, Johnny Maestro, right. for the Skyliners, for the Duprees, a, a lot of groups like that. But when I was with Billy during those five years from 1990 to 1995, we worked a lot with Len Barry. We did almost all the casinos. Well, you recorded very successfully for uh, collectible records for over a decade with uh, your group Frankie and the Fashions. Uh, tell me a little bit about that group and how it got started. Well, uh, Frankie and the Fashions actually started in 1963. We recorded our first song, was named Funny Girl, written by Billy Carlucci and Pete Therese of The Essentials for Mercury Records. That was April 10th, 1964, the same day that Bobby Darren was in New York in the studio recording Early in the Morning, one yeah. of his uh, early songs. And, uh, we, and what I did was uh, I got drafted 
And when I got out of the service, I, I really didn't look back on doo-wop. I didn't even know it, was, it existed yeah. anymore. <laughs> and I got into the classic rock. But when I hooked up with Billy Carlucci in 1990, I realized that there was whole, this whole cult following, and the doo-wop was very much alive at the casinos here in Philadelphia, in North Jersey, New York. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Boston, you know, and, and we've, we've done all those venues. What are your too. most memorable performances? I would have to say that the two most memorable performances, uh, and there were many, but the yeah. two top were with Len Barry. Uh, we were, Lenny and I opened for the original Five Temptations, New Year's Eve 1990 into 91 at the Taj Mahal. We and we, and Lenny and I sat behind the drummer right on stage while they were performing in Atlantic City. In Atlantic City, and uh, and we brought in the New Year together. We shook hands, and we were watching one of the most popular groups in the world. And the the second performance was also at the Taj. Uh, it was in a different room, uh, which seated six thousand people. We did two shows for for twelve thousand people because it was two separate audiences. Wow. And we opened for the Righteous Brothers with Len Barry. Uh, we opened for the Righteous Brothers, the year Ghost came out, and uh, Unchained Melody yeah. was just another hit all over again. It was another a memorable performance here at the Spectrum, it was capacity 17,500. Wow. And with Billy and the Essentials uh, and Charlie Gracie, we opened uh, for Frankie Avalon, Bobby Rydell, the, the, uh, the Spinners, uh, the Stylistics, it was a huge rock show. Man, boy, I'll tell you, I got up to that microphone and I was just like holding on to the mic stand. It was just like... Really intense. How did I miss that one? What year was that? Uh, that had to be, well, I, I was with Billy 1990 to 1995, so it was somewhere in the early 90s or, mid, you know, early, early I 90s. Mean, that's my favorite music. I don't know how I missed that performance, <laughs> but uh, my childhood buddy and your good friend uh, and baritone for 20 years, Michael Lulu, uh, said you were somewhat of an icon out in Pittsburgh. You know, it just happened, happened that way. I'm from Philadelphia, but... Uh, our greatest, uh, greatest audience is in Pittsburgh, and I think uh, I've been out there with different variations. Mike was with me most of the time yeah. of the fashions about 10 times from like uh, 1993 up until we retired uh, there about uh, three years ago. Now, one of your biggest hits, and it's also one of the top 10 most requested songs on Harvey Holiday Street Corner Sunday Show, uh, and also one of my favorites. Tell us about that song. When did you write it? Uh, well, the song is "What Do I Have to Do?" and uh, by request, it was it was uh, I, I think it came out number ten of the top ten uh, Harvey Holiday doo wop songs of all time uh, by request. And uh, what I did is I, I, th there was a mini series on Frank Sinatra in I guess it was 1992 into 93. It was winter time, so I'm not sure if it was the end of the year, or the beginning of the new. Uh, but there was a scene in there where where Sinatra. Got kind of cheated on Nancy and she found out about it and there was nothing he could say she was not going to let it go she was not going to forgive him so I th that was the inspiration and what I did is I wrote the song during that week actually yeah during that week and the very following next Sunday I went to Harvey Holiday and I went on his show live and I talked about it and told him about it and then of course I brought it on the show when, when it was recorded by uh, Frankie and the Fashions which was shortly after that and that was our big signature song it's probably the best thing out of over a hundred songs I've written it's probably the best song that, I've that's ever a great song we're gonna take a look at that right now
enclose this letter asking you to forgive me. I fold it, address it, and seal it with my tears. Please just tell me what do I have to do? Oh, what do I have to do to make all your sadness disappear? Just tell me what do I have to do? Oh, baby, what do I have to do? I said at the beginning of the uh, interview about uh, your movie debut, uh, I mentioned at the start that uh, you also wrote and performed a song for that film, Frank Lisi's award-winning film, uh, Sicilian Tale, in which you played a bodyguard for a senator played by our good buddy Jim Bagnell. Uh, tell us about that song. Well, that, that song was, uh, it came fairly easy uh, because I was also raised, again, on Italian music. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think it was influenced by any other movie themes or anything like that. It's called Mia Sicilia, and uh, although I am not Sicilian myself, uh, I, I, I kind of got into the, into the spirit of the country, the lemon trees and the olive groves and so on and so forth, and I wrote uh, what was considered a decent love song for the, for the film. Michael Lulu, who I mentioned earlier, uh, who unfortunately passed away, um, I had a chance to interview him on tape uh, a while back, and he gave me some interesting bits of information about you. Uh, one of them is that you've done records where you sing all the parts and combine the tracks to sound like one group when in fact it's all you. I mean, you do the lead, baritone, the uh, bass, the whole deal. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, what we do, how that's done, and the, uh, when it's a cappella, which most of the things I've done are a cappella, although we have some albums with music, how that's created is you go in and you put a click track down and that keeps the time. It's just a click, click, and then I'll, I'll put a guitar, which I play, or a keyboard, which I play, yeah. just for basic chords to keep me on key. And I know when to come in, and since I'm singing with myself, I blend beautifully, and uh, <laughs> I know when to stop yes. and start, because again, I'm doing that. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes when you want something done right, you gotta yeah, do it yourself. yourself. That's, you that's terrific. What do you call the group? Uh... Well, actually, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a legitimate... Uh, no, no, a, a legitimate <laughs> album that was put out by Collectibles and Dennis Pettit from Collectibles was actually aptly named the LaFaros. Oh, okay. So, and he actually comes out and, and admits that, that I'm doing, doing all, the, all parts the parts on the whole the album. The talent of yours that I'm told uh, that you performed and recorded with our good friend Bobby Tippin of the... Uh, group now and then who also does a great Billy Joel tribute I might absolutely add. and that the two of you do a duet of Irish tunes so uh, let me ask you what part of Ireland are you from laddie <laughs> I'm from County Naples <laughs> uh, well what other what are you involved with now what other groups well the, there's actually just one main group believe it or not nothing happening no. with the fashions uh, after Mike passed away just our heart wasn't in it yeah. anymore to keep it going and because uh, he was really the, the heart and soul of the group. You've also done a lot of, uh, of work for uh, the veterans groups, you know, and, uh, and the FOP. Uh, give me a little bit of insight about that. Well, uh, the, the, the thing with the FOP, well, I'm a veteran myself, as you are. We're both Vietnam veterans. And uh, uh, so any, any chance, any opportunity I have to help the veterans, I'm, I'm glad to do that. Uh, the thing with the FOP, uh, I wrote a song for Daniel Faulkner, who uh, was murdered about uh, 20 some years ago. 29, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going on 30 years. And I wrote a song, uh, it's called A Song for Danny. And uh, I, I'm very, very good friends with his partner, who was his partner at the time, Gary Bell. Uh, what we did was we talked about this. I was only going to put maybe that song and Danny Boy on a CD for the uh, FOP and for the Justice for Faulkner Foundation. What happened was Mrs. Faulkner, Maureen, and, uh, and Gary uh, had, had said to me, well, why don't you just go ahead and do a, like a whole album? So yeah. I included uh, some of my other original songs. So there's a song that I wrote called 4699, actually, that's the title of Danny's song. That was his badge number. And, uh, and I put uh, eight other original songs that I've written, plus Danny Boy, which I didn't write. And uh, what, what, what it was, it was uh, Joey Vento from Geno's uh, put up the money for it to have it pressed and recorded and so on. And uh, there were a thousand copies pressed. And I believe Gary told me the other night, because I just saw him at the film, The Barrel of the Gun. We sat right. together and yeah. 
you know, we went together. Uh, he said that about 900 copies were, were sold. So uh, half that money uh, went to the uh, FOP Lodge 5 Survivors Fund, and the other half, once this last 100 is sold, is going to go to the, uh, the Faulkner College Fund. Most large cities have their own song. It's sort of like an anthem, you know, Chicago, that title in town, uh, my, left my heart in San Francisco, and naturally Sinatra's New York, New York. Now, you've written a song for the city of brotherly love. Tell us about that, and uh, when did you write that one? Actually, the music I wrote when I was about 15 years old. Really? And the, the lyrics, I, I wrote them about 1992, and then I, I wrote an additional verse uh, just last year when I actually recorded it with a 17-piece orchestra with a new arrangement by uh, Larry McKenna, who's a great jazz uh, arranger and sax player. So uh, we'll have to get a grassroots movement to get this song of yours to become the uh, anthem of Philadelphia. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to end the show uh, with a clip of your, your song, Philadelphia. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, before we do, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I would just like to say that uh, my name is Frank LaFaro, and I do approve this message. Now he wants to add comedian to his resume. Get out of here. Come here. Come here. Get this guy. <laughs> I'm Liam Kelly, and that's Celebrity Talk with uh, Frank LaFaro. singing I like swinging I like walking downtown after dark catch a play a show or a movie everything's just groovy on a ride through Fairmount Park crazy dancing and romancing under stars in her crown up above just to know her is to love her Philadelphia, I'm in love The food on South Street can't be beat The hippest people you'll ever meet Are on that street There's more history in one square mile than in any place else in the states Independence was established by the founding fathers Those wise old delegates As for music, it's the latest Rock and roll, jazz and classical too the Parkway or Penn's Landing Though you may be standing You're dancing in your shoes The Eagles, Flyers, Sixers and the Phils When lose or draw They give us thrills And lots of chills Down on Two Street Rocky put so much heart in his glove What a city, let me tell ya Philadelphia, Philadelphia